Doctors and medical professionals have read it. What one medical fact do you wish everybody knew? Vaccines are safe and save lives. Viral infections cannot be treated with antibiotics. If exercise were a pill, it'd be the most prescribed drug in existence. You should not stop an antibiotic treatment because you feel better already. Mental illness can be as serious as a physical one. Get treated. You wouldn't let a broken leg go. Keep an eye on your weight. Rapid and intentional weight loss is often a sign something serious is up. It's significantly more effective to prevent cancer than it is to treat it. But the world isn't interested because most people just want a pill to fix their problems. Don't smoke. Wear sunscreen. Don't drink excessively. Get a bit of exercise and eat some goddamn vegetables. Do those and bam. Huge drop in cancer risk. But nobody wants to hear it. Doctor here. Keep things out of your ears. Seriously. Stay at home with norovirus. Call and ask for advice don't come in and infect a bunch of possibly already ill people. Doctor here. Most important rule. Know your own history and drugs. Our EMRs are too inefficient to depend on. Especially if you've been to many different institutions. Nurse here. If you're an alcoholic that's admitted to the hospital. Don't lie about how much you drink. There are drugs we can give you to take the edge off of withdrawals. It's safer for you and safer for us. We're not judging you. We have safety in mind. If your kid has a fever. And you give them Tylenol or Ibuprofen to bring it down. They are still. Duck eyeing. Sick. You're only treating symptoms temporarily. Not curing anything. For the love of everything holy. Do not give them Tylenol and send them to school daycare sports birthday parties etc. To become patient zero and infect everyone else. Smoking will kill you. Nah. Cancer won't get to me you might say. And you'd be statistically right. It'll be your heart. In the simplest of terms. Smoking makes your arteries rigid. So as they progressively get filled with fat. Instead of increasing their diameter they'll just get stuffed until no more blood can get through and you'll be done. If you're lucky you'll get some chest pains beforehand but that's not always the case. Jokes on you sucker. I got a heart attack and survived. Death ain't got it on me. Welcome to the world of chronic heart failure where from now on every day that goes by your heart will be less a pump and more a container. Until you get out of breath from just speaking and eventually die. There's no going back. Please stop smoking. Edit. That only happens to chain smokers. I only smoke occasionally. Some new updates because no one learns. I work in a burn unit. Don't put accelerants on a camp bonfire. Don't go back into a burning house vehicle airplane. Don't put accelerants on bonfires. This includes aerosol cans of stuff. Those blow up. Don't make meth unless you have an advanced degree in the field. Don't put accelerants on bonfires. Even if it just won't light. Don't let your pod handles hang over the edge of the stove where your kid can reach. Don't put accelerants on bonfires. Even if you've been doing it for years. Don't pick up containers of flaming grease and oil. Don't put accelerants on bonfires. Diesel is an accelerant. Don't keep electric cigarettes in your pocket. If you wear oxygen. Don't smoke with it on in your lap. Don't burn trash. You don't know what the ducks in there. Probably accelerants. Stop opening your radiator cap unless the car is cold. Carburetor injuries are common. I don't know how it happens. Help me out car people. Don't. Put. Accelerants. On. Your. Gadam. Fire. Ananan. The human rectum is nightmarishly elastic. The pregnancy test you get in the ER is no different from the one at the store and equally accurate. Drug allergies and side effects are not the same thing. It makes you look like a crazy person when you have 20 allergies and 19 of the reactions are nausea. Doctors are there to help you. Stop lying to them. They have to protect your privacy. So if you're doing drugs, tell them. They have to keep it secret. And it could kill you if you don't. ER doc here. Medical fact. Emergency means potential loss of life, limb, or eyesight. It does not mean inconvenience, irritation, or chronic condition. Your sore throat evaluation in the ED is gonna cost you $1000. Go to an urgent care.
Not a doctor but something a doctor told me when the incident occurred. Girls if you get excruciating cramps at the time of your period and it feels much worse than it actually is. Go to a doctor. When I was 13 I had already been confirmed to having a ovarian cyst. And it made it very painful for me during my periods to the point where I had passed out from the pain of it once. However at one point it felt much worse than it typically did and I blew it off as being because of my period. It turned out my appendix was bursting. The doctor told me a lot of women blow off period cramps because doctors tend to do the same. Don't. It almost meant life or death for me. 1. Reverse cowgirl may be a fun position for you but please be careful girls. 2. Blood in your pee when not associated with pain and fever is something you need to get checked out. 3. Get that new ugly mold checked. Especially if it is painful or bleeds spontaneously. 4. Boys. If you notice some irregularity growth in your balls please get it checked early. If your ball is the size of a grapefruit, ignoring it will not make it go away. It will just increase the risk of worse news than that you are fearing. It is much better to be labeled a worried well than the alternative. If we are stressed or rushed for time it's not personal. It's the system. We may not always say it but we are grateful for those who take responsibility for their health. Dentist here. Just because a toothache goes away, doesn't mean it's all better. Many times it's the calm before the abscess. It goes from dying, to dead, to abscessed in as fast as a day or sooner. Just don't lie to us. We don't judge you because your poop is smelly or you like to put things up there. Remember always, we've seen something far, far worse than the gerbil up your butt. Oh and don't ducking drink and drive. Not a medical fact. As much as it's just something I wish all patients would do, I'd love it if patients could bring a sheet of paper with all the meds they're on. Past medical history, past surgical history, allergies, and family doctor contact info. It's a small thing, but can be so helpful. RPH here. Do not keep your medicine in your medicine cabinet in your bathroom. The steam from a shower and the temperature fluctuations will degrade your medication. Keep them in a cool dry place away from direct sunlight. Also look through your OTC items in your house and clean out the expired drugs and restock your basics. Ibuprofen, acetaminophen, pepto, eye drops, etc. Vet tech. Your cat is probably obese. So many people free choice their cats because it's easier or just way overfeed their cats because cats whine a lot. You're not doing your cat any favors. He is going to get diabetes. I'd guess that about 10% of cats I've seen are actually at a healthy weight. Get a good one toy and play with your cat every day and for god's sake limit how much they eat. Also, treats are supposed to be less than 10% of your pet's caloric intake. Cool it with the treats. Your immune system is one of the greatest assets you have and you never thank it. In your life, your body will autonomously eradicate between 6 and 10 cancers without your realizing. It will fight your infections, repair micro traumas and police the entire population of billions of cells in your body without your asking. All it requests in return is a little bit of health to preserve it. Stop smoking. Lose weight. Maybe exercise a little. Don't drink so much. Your diet is so much more important that you realize. Nurse and midwife here. I wish people understood that if they are receiving treatment for a condition, they still have that condition. Case in point, if you're taking medication for something you aren't suddenly free of that disease, your blood pressure meds are maintaining a normal blood pressure because you have the condition of high blood pressure. Your insulin is maintaining your blood sugars because you have diabetes. Sounds simple but amazing how much people tell us they have no conditions but are on 1000 medications that tell a different story. Don't lie to us. It never works out. And if your pee is a different color, don't ignore it. Seek help. We're never going to find a cure for cancer. Cancer is not one singular thing. All cancer cells behave differently. Avoid grapefruit and grapefruit juice if you are taking some kind of medication. About 50% of pharmaceuticals on the market are metabolized at least in part by CYP3A4, which is inhibited by compounds found in grapefruit. Alcohol withdrawal is deadly. Many of my patients don't know this. It's a gamble. I've seen 5th of vodka day drinkers not withdrawal. And 2-3 beers day withdrawal. 
It onsets quickly. And it's deadly. Anyone who drinks almost daily and is deciding to quit cold turkey needs to understand this. And notify family at the bare minimum. Volunteer SAR ship crew member here. When you suspect whoever is lying down is not breathing by themselves. Begin CPR immediately and do not stop until medical professional arrives. Even if this means that you have to go on for several hours. We do not perform CPR to have the patient miraculously wake up and make out with us. We do this to sustain the most vital bodily function, the circulation of oxygen to the brain, until we can get that person to a hospital. Vaccines are the greatest advancement in modern medicine. They save lives and prevent weeks of lost work each year. Flu season. If people started seeing more pertussis, whooping cough, or epiglottitis, part of the throat swells up and can kill children, they'd get their shots. But vaccines have become victims of their own success. Get your shots to protect immunodeficient people that can't get their shots. Vaccines do not cause autism. TL. Doctor if you don't get vaccinated and you don't vaccinate your kids then you are an asshole. Doctor here. Don't stop your medications by yourself. Just don't. No matter how good you feel. Patients stop antibiotics and relapse. So many resistant TB cases here. Stop taking insulin and come with DKA. Stop taking antihypertensives and get a stroke. Don't stop any drug unless cleared prior with your doctor. Most of the diseases can only be managed. They can't really be cured. If you have diabetes, get sugar levels tested at least once a month. Don't ignore it. Don't mix alcohol and antidepressants. Also, no matter how bad it is, we have seen worse. Don't be ashamed. Pull out doesn't mean she won't get pregnant. Precum has sperm too. Last, if you see anyone vomiting and lost conscious, turn them to their side. Less chances of it entering lungs. Wash your hands. The world is disgusting and you are touching it all the time. Vaccines don't cause autism. Nor do they contain elemental aluminum or mercury. Resident here, there is no singular cure for cancer. There is not a big pharma conspiracy that hinges on keeping said cure a secret. Smoking not only causes cancer, but also arterial sclerosis, COPD and multiple other problems you're much more likely to encounter when smoking. Former M's here. Don't get angry when that quiet person gets taken out of the ER waiting room before you. You have a headache and are raging and I can't help you. But that person who just got taken back is quiet for a reason. You're not dying. Death is quiet. I can't tell you how many times I took someone to the ER yelling and kicking and screaming and when we roll up and they get looked at it's often minor. I've seen people who I had a feeling would not make it. They don't rave like idiots. They lay still and quiet and it's almost eerie. Clinical psychologist here. If you need mental health treatment, try your local college campuses. Oftentimes there are training clinics. Supervised by some of the best clinicians around. Most will provide a generous sliding fee scale. Treatment works, especially for sleep problems, depression, anxiety, PTSD, etc. Also do not ignore mental health problems in your children or adolescents including when you are concerned about substance use. Early intervention works best and if you wait until they are 18. They may not get treatment for another decade because they refuse to go in until they mature in their late 20s. So if your child or adolescent is showing signs of a mood or anxiety disorder, cutting, struggling with ADHD, and is using drugs regularly, weekly or more, and you are concerned consider an intake assessment with a licensed psychologist. I may be alone in this. But I want my patients to know that there is no possible way I can keep up with all the medical advances and new studies that are out there. And I also want them to know that there are thousands of conditions that I learned about in medical school that I've forgotten because I've never seen or recognized them in practice. This is important. Because my patients frequently apologize for looking up things on the internet. No. Don't apologize. I want you to research your condition. I want you to look things up. I want you to know about new treatments, new research, and alternative medications. Because often I don't. I may not agree with the things you've read, and that's fine too. Ask me about things you've read and the picture you found that looks like your ash. 
I can't tell you how many times a patient has come to me with a suggestion about a possible explanation for symptoms because they read about it on the internet that turned out to be a correct or at least reasonable guess. Please educate yourselves about yourselves. Some good websites are the CDC website and AAFP.org, the American Academy of Family Practice. And if your doctor is offended that you're trying to be educated, get a different doctor. Source, I'm a doctor. Just because you're not suffering from a mental health disorder, it doesn't mean it's not a real thing. Not a doctor, but one year off of the mark, as a training psychologist on an interdisciplinary team. I wish patients knew that community resources often work on income-based, sliding fee scales to meet the client. Financially, let's be real, mental health coverage is trash right now, but there is an abundance of professionals who acknowledge this and advocate in-house. It is always worth asking around.